previous video, I talked about why it's so important to establish visual hierarchy by making some visual elements more important than others, more dominant. But it's also important to know, if we start making some elements so dominant that one part of the composition starts overpowering some other parts of the composition, we will feel, just looking at that, that something feels wrong about the whole thing, about the composition. So in other words, we need to make sure that whatever we do with the dominant elements, we always need to keep the composition balanced. Which means that if we add more dominance or more, let's say, uh, visual weight on one side of the composition, then we need to compensate in some other way on the other side of the composition. Now, if this looks or sounds familiar to you, that's because a uh, visual uh, balance is actually uh, works in the same way as a physical balance. So if we imagine a seesaw with, uh, with two children of this, about the same weight, we can, we can say that you know, they are balanced because they have the same weight distributed in the, at the same distance from the center. This equivalence of this sort of physical balance in a visual medium is called symmetry. So symmetry is such kind of visual balance or visual composition that uh, we conceive by applying or by putting the same visual elements on the same distance from the center, what we call central axis. In other, way, in other words, symmetry feels like a mirrored image. On the other hand, if we take the, one, the same seesaw and uh, place an adult, which is much heavier on one side, then obviously we will, we will see that seesaw is out of balance and so will our visual compositions would be. So in the physical world, in order to compensate for this added weight, if we want to keep the seesaw balanced, we need to move the adult person closer to the axis. This is the same way that the, we will establish a visual balance between two uneven elements. And in a visual composition, the, uh, we call this principle an asymmetry. So asymmetry is a way of achieving a visual balance between elements that do, do not have the same visual weight, but by using secondary principles, such as the distance from the center, or more color on one side, or more in intense shape on one side, and the bigger shape on the other side, we still conceive the balance. So uh, symmetry and asymmetry is something that, as a designer and architect, you are mo most often work with almost all the time. And it's important to say that although these are both ways to establish a visual balance, that they have a different psychological effect on us. So symmetry, like the mirrored image, feels, uh, how would I say, it feels like a, is a, it feels like a very, very, very solid and stable composition. As the same way as in the physical world, like symmetrical composition feels like there's no way to topple, and that's why symmetry can, uh, transmits us feeling of, of persistence, of power, of stability. And that's why symmetry has been used throughout the ages to transmit these values or these emotions to us. On the other hand, asymmetry always feels like an unstable balance. It feels like any moment that things could topple one way or another. And it's this tension that makes, uh, I would say, asymmetry in one way visually interesting, but also very often feels that the things are just about to move. And that's why asymmetry transmits us sort of a feel of movement or, 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 and results in slightly or dramatically more dynamic composition. So symmetry and asymmetry, the things that as a designer you will lose most, but these are not the only ones, only ways to establish the balance. There's a third way uh, to establish balance, and it's called radial symmetry. And radial symmetry is basically arranging elements around the circle so they all point to the same focal points in the center. What we achieve by the radial symmetry is a very, very strong focus on what's inside. That's why this sort of composition uh, were often used for rituals from Stonehenge to, let's say, modern stadiums or music venues. Finally, the fourth uh, way to achieve balance is through something called mosaic, uh, a mosaic uh, balance, which is basically means that we have visual elements that are distributed all the way through the composition in the same way so that they lack hierarchy. Now, as I said in the previous video, hierarchy is very important for uh, perceiving architecture in one way, so uh, the way that you, use, uh, you, as an architect, you probably won't be using mosaic symmetry very much, but if in some way 
you want to uh, avoid hierarchy in order to express some certain feel of, let's say, uh, uh, ordered chaos, then mosaic symmetry is what you want to work with. In most other cases, you will use asymmetry or symmetry to balance your composition.